A new report finds many people living in San Francisco would need to work four minimum wage jobs just to make the rent. This makes it the nation's least affordable rental market. It now takes a household income of $68.33 an hour to afford a two-bedroom apartment. In San Jose, that same apartment would take $58.67 an hour. Santa Cruz comes in third in this survey at $58.10 an hour needed, and the East Bay is fourth, where you have to make at least $45.83 an hour, while this comes as California's minimum wage now stands at $14 an hour. Joining us now to talk about this gap is Diane Yentel, president and CEO of the National Low-Income Housing Coalition uh, that, that crunched these numbers and, and is putting, putting out this uh, very um, unfortunate situation sort of highlighting this gap here uh, you know obviously Diane we 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 know it's expensive to live here in the Bay Area but were you surprised at all uh, when you looked at these figures and saw just how tough it is for people to to be able to afford to live in the Bay Area well unfortunately it's not surprising but it's always shocking I mean the numbers in California and in the Bay Area in particular are just extremely expensive and out of reach for not just minimum wage workers, but for the average renters in the state of California as well. As you sh as you shared earlier, California and the Bay Area are the least expensive are, are the least affordable places in the country when it comes to housing. And in the city of San Francisco, somebody would have to earn forty five dollars an hour just to be able to afford a studio apartment. So this is clearly not just out of reach for minimum wage workers, but the average renter in the state of California who earns about $25 an hour yeah. can't begin to afford these apartment costs. Yeah, it, it's tough for everyone across the board, but you wonder how, how folks on the, on the low end of the spectrum, uh, you know, the low income uh, renters are, are making it all work. What, what, it, what are the biggest factors that, that make the Bay Area the most expensive place to rent in the nation, you think? Well, there's a number of reasons. One one thing that certainly contributes to the very high costs in California and in cities throughout California are very restrictive local zoning laws that inhibit the construction of any kind of apartments and especially affordable apartments. This drives up costs for everyone while while at the same time really reinforcing and exacerbating segregation and other types of inequities. What's most needed uh, at, at the state and city level is for communities to address and remove these restrictive zoning laws and allow for more apartments to be built for everybody. But for the lowest income people, for extremely low income or very low income households, federal and state and local subsidies are necessary to make the numbers work for apartments to be able to be able to, to be built and maintained and operated at a cost that those lowest income people can afford to pay the rent for. And speaking of that assistance that, that's available for, for low income renters uh, here in California specifically, uh, you know, we have a lot of concern right now about this potential wave of evictions that could be coming uh, once the, the moratorium on evictions expires uh, later this year in September. Uh, the state has approved billions of dollars in, in rent relief for, for low income renters. Uh, do you feel like enough people are taking advantage of that assistance? Well, there's been a there's been some problems with that program from the outset. It got off to a slow start, unfortunately. Uh, very recently, the state did make some important improvements to that program. So I do think it will be more accessible to some of those lowest income renters who need that assistance the most. But very little of that money has gone out yet. Uh, so the state and cities who are running their own emergency rental assistance programs really need to do more and do better to get that money to tenants quickly so that they can pay that rent that they owe and stay housed when the eviction moratorium expires. In, in speaking of, of the past year and a half and the pandemic, uh, you know, in San Francisco, especially and across the Bay Area, we, we did see rents drop significantly uh, during during COVID. Did, did low income renters benefit at all from from that drop in rent? No, they really didn't, because, you know, pre COVID, we had about 10 million renter households, very low income who were paying at least half of their income towards rent, and many were paying much more. Many of those same families were the families who lost jobs, lost hours at work, lost wages when the shutdowns from COVID-19 happened, and they fell behind on rent. 
it was the federal eviction moratoriums and state local moratoriums where they applied that kept people housed during the pandemic, but they fell behind on rent. By January of this year, many of those 10 million renter households owed upwards of $50 billion in rent and utility arrears. So the good news is that the federal government has provided nearly that much money in emergency rental assistance, but it's not reaching tenants and landlords fast enough to keep those tenants stably housed when the moratorium expires. Yeah, so many folks uh, struggling just to just to stay afloat here in the Bay Area. And uh, this this uh, report here really highlights uh, the, the, the affordability crisis in the Bay Area. Appreciate you coming on to break it down. Diane Yentel, president and CEO of the National Low Income Housing Coalition. Thank you. Thanks for having me.